You know, we oftentimes, we oftentimes just get caught up with what we think God should be doing in our lives. We get caught up with what we think God should be doing in someone else's life. We get caught up with certain sins and say, you know, God really needs to be working on that. Or God really needs to, who are we to tell God? Who are we to tell the master potter what to do? The master designer how to work? If you are committed to stay in a relationship with him, to stay in communion with him, the promise is that he will finish the work that he has started. You know, I'm a big fan of HDTV's hit show, Fixer Upper. I mean, I am a huge Chip and JoJo fan. I just think they have such amazing chemistry on, on TV and in life. And I love to see the things that they do, uh, the way they go about rehabbing these homes. And, and I get busy, so I don't get to watch them all, but I have a DVR, so, you know, I have like 15, 16 episodes that, that I need to catch up on. I was sad to hear that this is the last season for them, uh, so I need to catch up. But every once in a while, when I have a little bit of time, you know, I'll, I'll put it on to watch. And I just love when they go watching these houses, these rehabs. They're not in, in the best shape. You know, some of them from the 70s, the 80s, they, they can tell, you can, they show their year, right? And, uh, you know, sometimes they, they, they're just dirty. You remember that one episode when, when Chip grabbed that dead cockroach from the, they, do you remember that? Any fans here, he picked it up and he ate it? Do you remember that episode? You're thinking, Chip, you're crazy. Why are you doing that? I mean, but it's funny, you know? Anyways, I, I just love that. And I have to admit to you that the hardest part of that show for me is, is the in-between. Like the, the whole process of, of the teardown, the demolition day, and then bringing the, the decoration. Sometimes, I will admit to you, I find myself fast-forwarding all the way to the end. Why? Because I want to see the great reveal. I, I want to see where, where Chip and Jojo are standing there and says, All right, John and Sally... You want to see your fixer upper? And that's what I love. And then they, they open the doors and they're crying. They're just so amazed how awesome it looks. <coughs> it's that middle part that we struggle with, isn't it? We know where we are in life. We know or we think we know where we want to be. And the struggle, the pain, the day-to-day -day wears on us. And we are sometimes tempted to think that I've sinned one too many times. We're tempted to think that that was the straw that broke God's back. It's just taking way too long. Therefore, God must not love me anymore. He's done with me. He's through with me. The promise. Being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now the question that I want to answer, which we're going to spend the rest of the time trying to answer that question, is how far will God go? To what lengths Will God go to finish the work that He has started in you, in me? How far will He go? To try and answer that question, I'd like for you to turn in your Bibles to uh, the book of John. If you don't have your Bibles or your, or your smart phones or your tablets, um, it'll be up on the screen. John, it's already up there. Wow, usually I meet people there and you're already there. All right, John chapter 21. John chapter 21. What an awesome story this is. John chapter 21. Again, I'm reading from the New King James Version, starting with verse 15. But you know, before we read verse 15, some of you I know have read this story many times before, but let me just kind of bring you up to speed to where we are in the story. So days before this, maybe even a, a couple of weeks, um, Jesus and the disciples were in the upper room. And while they were there, Jesus turns to Peter and says, you're going to deny me. 
And Peter says, no, 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 there's no way. God, I, I Jesus, I'm going to, I will die for you. Like I will give up my life before I deny you. And Jesus says, no, no, you will deny me. You will deny me. And so you know the story, several hours later, they were in the courtroom, uh, in the courtyard, and, and they asked Peter, do you know this man? Do you remember the story? And, and as Jesus predicted, Peter denied him three times that night. The Bible tells us that he was so sad, he was just sick to his stomach that he had done that, that he fled, he left. And so now, several days, perhaps some weeks later, there is this interaction between Jesus and Peter. And so let's read it together. John chapter 21, starting with verse 15, it says, So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Now, I've heard this story many times. I've, I've heard pastors say how appropriate that here Peter denied Jesus three times and here Jesus is, is giving Peter an opportunity to apologize three times. And I'm sure that there are some spiritual lessons that we can learn from that. But when we dig a little deeper into these passages, we realize that that's not really what's taking place. That it's not like we serve a God that's tit for tat, you know. That, that okay, because I did this, now I have to do this. Because I sinned this way, now I have to give this much. Or because I fell again, now I need to go. That's not how God works. My friends, that is not how mercy works. That is not how grace works. You see, because grace covers a multitude of sins. And though our sins, our lives be like scarlet, He will make them white as snow. The question I'm trying to answer, remember, is how far will God go to finish the work that he has started in you? Now, Jesus started a very important work in Peter's life, what, three and a half years before? Some would argue even before that. But remember all the ups and downs that Peter had in his journey, in his life with Jesus? He was called a disciple for a reason. Jesus was mentoring him. Jesus was teaching him the ways of God's kingdom. And Jesus wasn't going to give up on Peter just because Peter messed up. No. The promise is that he who began a good work is faithful to what? Complete that work. How far will God go to complete that work in us? You know that the Greek language is complicated. If you've been around pastors long enough, you will hear them complain about the Greek and Hebrew classes that they had to take in college. And it is complicated, Greek especially. And Greek is a very detailed language. In fact, there are many words that we use that the Greek have several words to describe the one word that we use. Love is one of those. We use the word love to describe all kinds of things, right? Think about this. I love my wife. I also love ice cream. Now you shouldn't love your wife and love ice cream in the same way. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Right? And the Greeks understood that. That's why they had different words 
that meant different things, but we all translate those in one word, love. So let me give you an example. There was a word that they used to describe the love between friends. Does anyone know what that word is? Phileo or philea, right? Which is where we get the word Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. And then there's a word that they use to describe the love between lovers, a romantic kind of love. Does anyone know what that love word was? Eros. Eros, that's right, which is where we get the word erotic from. And then there is a, a much bigger, much deeper, the purest kind of love, which is agape love, which is the love that God has towards mankind. It is an, un, a, a, an unselfish, a, a sacrificial, an unconditional kind of love. It is the kind of love that you and I as Christians are called to have towards everyone. And there are several other words for love, but, but the one, the two that I want to focus on today is the phileo love, which is the brotherly love, and then the agape love, which is the love, the, the, the perfect, the purest form of love, the agape love. Knowing those two things now, let's read John 15, 21, 15 once again, okay? All right, you ready? It says this, verse 15. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you, listen, do you agape me? That's what Jesus asked Peter. And this is how Peter responds, okay? Jesus says, do you agape me? He, Peter, said to Jesus, Yes, Lord, you know that I phileo you. Did you catch that? Do you see what's happening? In this verse, in this conversation, basically what's happening is Jesus says to Peter, Do you agape me? Do you love me unconditionally, sacrificially? Do you love me to the very end? And Peter's response is, no, I don't. My actions have proven otherwise. I don't love you with an agape love, but I love you as a brother. That's how Peter responds. It blows this verse up, doesn't it? Now all of a sudden you're thinking, whoa, what's going on? This conversation is a lot deeper than just reading it on the surface. And then it says in verse 16, Jesus, he said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you agape me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I am. Phileo you. So a second time, Jesus says to Peter, do you agape me? And a second time, Peter responds and he says, no, I don't. I wish I could. I wish I were there. But no, I don't, I don't agape you, but I phileo you. But I, I love you as a brother. Now pay close attention to what happens next. In verse 17, Jesus, he said to him, Peter, a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you phileo me? And it says here that Peter was grieved because he has said to him a third time, do you phileo me? Feed my sheep. Why is this significant? 
Why is this important for us here today? 